The nicest part about this work is if I get tired, I don't feel like it, I don't have to continue. Of course, it is a good way to earn extra money too. I'm doing something, I'm not just idle. All my life I was working, so I'm used to work. So the work didn't bother me at all. And I was happy because I was with people and I'm, and I'm not uh, idle, that I have to think. And that was the best thing for me. Oh, I don't know if I'll hear from her today, or maybe tomorrow. But when I do, I'm sure she's gonna bring that pattern for the dress. You remember the one I told you about, the one cut on the bias? Yes, well, if she does bring it in, you let me know. Oh, I will. <sighs> Fran, I'm not interested in doing much more here. So what do you say we go down to lunch, and then we'll go to the game room and have a little game of pinochle? All right, but why don't we work until noon? That'll give us two hours each here. And then we can go. Okay. As seen in this workshop, it's good mental health practice to employ a wide variety of residents, not just those who can do the best and fastest job for the institution. The staff took advantage of the socialization opportunities in grouping the residents and in creating an atmosphere where chatting was encouraged. Individuals were able to increase their manual skills and jobs were assigned to help maintain or regain function. Thus, residents benefited socially, financially and physically from going to work. This leads to an increase in their feeling of being productive and contributing human beings. What seemed to be lacking in these assembly line type jobs was an attempt to draw on the former skills of the residents. Just noticed you as you came in. How are you? Fine. I noticed you came in early, you and that's fine. Won't you come in? Be Thank some you. of the people. Thank you very much. You'll enjoy it. Right there. I've seen you here before. No, this is my first time here. My name is Edwards, George Edwards. I hope I play as good as you do, George. I hope so. I'll deal first. Yes, sir. I haven't seen you wear that dress before. Is that a recent acquisition? My daughter, she brought it to me about two weeks ago. Girl, no, you know, I suppose you want some warm bedrooms. But well, there's so many other things that I could use. And you know, 
I don't really need this type of thing. Oh, I know, but it's so pretty. Social activities can be of great help in speeding the recovery of residents in long-term care facilities. However, it is important to involve the resident in the design of activities for his individual needs. In the case of Mr. E, suffering from both physical and emotional problems, experiences similar to the one just shown will tend to drive him further away from complete recovery. The volunteer worker was quick to respond to this newcomer's inability to socialize successfully by engaging him individually in a game of checkers. A continuing effort should be made by volunteers and recreation workers to engage Mr. E in one-to-one -one activities leading to a gradual reintroduction to members of the resident population that share his interests and temperament. Hi, Miss Williams. How are you today? What can I do for you? Well, I'd like one of those little yellow pills you keep hidden away from me. Okay, just a minute. I haven't seen your friend Paula around lately. What did she do? Up and quit? No, she didn't up and quit. She's on vacation. There's your pill, Mr. Feingold. Ah, yes. Thanks. Ah. <sighs> 
Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the third time he's been up here for pills today. You know, he's always bugging somebody about something. You're right. Maybe we should get his doctor to up the dose. Well, if we did, maybe we could have a little peace and quiet around here for a change. Unfortunately, Mr. Feingold did not want or need the pill he requested. He needed to talk to someone. The need for human interaction is very real. An effort should be made on the part of staff to be aware of this need and understand that it ranks in importance with other basic service delivery. <laughs> 